Hi, this is Margo. This is Wednesday, June 20th, 2018. And um, I'm going to do a little update on greenhouse gases today. And uh, I'm going to share another new website I found with you. And we're going to look at Climate Reanalyzer. So just to check on levels to see where we're at with sea ice and warming and <clears throat> methane and sulfur dioxide and things like that. Now I have the CAMS website up and this is the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service that you're familiar with now. With This is the polar view of the Earth. And here's our chart at the bottom. This is in parts per billion. And you see that the um, red is about 2,000 parts per billion and then it goes up from there so the dark red so that's 2020 and the brick red is 2040 and then like this black they've got it listed as 75,600 so the latest data is from Sunday June 17th so um so this is a forecast from this data and and because they get the data in the database and they run the forecast and so we're going to look at the polar view first and right off the bat you can see a lot of methane right off the coast of Siberia and it's really really dark and we'll do a close-up view of this too and you can see Norway's covered up and the whole ocean there is like really the methane's really covering it up. Now the difference you can see b between the last few uh, re reports I've done is that orangey level from when we had that methane spike at the end of May that is leveling out. You can see that that's dispersing and so it's kind of going back to um, the green that it was up on the northern hemisphere so that is dispersing but we're still getting methane release and since we're headed into summer of course there's going to be more methane released than in the winter time from the northern hemisphere so let's load this up and run the movie <clears throat> and show everyone what's going on <clears throat> I like to do these updates about every five to seven to ten days because a lot can happen in that amount of time and I have some new things to show you that are going on with sulfur dioxide too um, it's, it's just like the earth is bringing leaks is just bringing leaks everywhere so things are shaking and quaking <clears throat> and uh, it's things are heating up everywhere uh, we're now into summer yesterday was the first day of summer and for the northern hemisphere and um, so a lot of a lot of disasters are happening with flooding and sinkholes and stuff like that but and it's it's gonna be getting worse so let's run this through and you can just see where we're at globally <clears throat> so you can see um, this this methane coming up out of the Arctic Ocean there where it's heating and that's that's melting really quickly there the sea ice is melting very quickly there you can see it coming up off the east coast of the United States you see China's all covered up Asia is high in methane the northern part of India um, and then of course we've got the Cy 
methane coming up out of the melting permafrost in Siberia and um, <clears throat> so and we're going to look at the whole different globe view in a moment here but I just wanted to show you this to begin with so let's go in a little bit closer on the Arctic and do that Arctic view and run the movie again because this is the area that the climate scientists are really watching with the melting sea ice wow look at this spewing up now here's Novaya Zemlya and of course um, you know I just did that long video about Novaya Zemlya and all the nuclear testing that was done on that island by the Russians during the Cold War there were 224 nuclear tests done during the Cold War um, on that island and in the ocean on either side of the island and the Russians dumped a bunch of uh, radioactive nuclear waste in the sea there including there's a submarine down there and uh, reactor rods and all kinds of stuff and my theory is that that's that's all that like is what caused the um, the warming of the Arctic to begin in the early 60s and why the Arctic is really heating up so fast now because you know I don't discount well, okay, while this movie is loading, I'll just talk. Um, I don't discount, you know, carbon dioxide and the feedback loops and all of that. And, I mean, these are all components, but I feel like this, um, the nuclear activity is, and the radioactive stuff going on up there, is a missing piece of the puzzle that the climate scientists have not addressed and that it is contributing to abrupt climate change and I think this is a missing piece that we need to factor in and um, the more I study about uh, nuclear nuclear stuff the more I think that this has just got to be factored in an abrupt climate change and to for them to say well it's just carbon emissions is is not enough because you know anyway it's a whole thing okay that is very dramatic look at that look at that hole and see it just coming up off of Norway and <clears throat> this whole area here Okay, it's going to start, okay, here it goes, starting over. That is, that's awful. Oh my God, that's awful. Now we can see that um, Alaska has, uh, this uh, northern part of Alaska <clears throat> has calmed down as far as methane emissions this week. Um it's not as red over Canada uh, this week <clears throat> but it's really popping up here in the Arctic Sea oh and by the way this little island here off of Norway that's where the seed vault is in case anybody was wondering the seed vault that just added its millionth sample a couple of days ago it's right next to that radioactive activity so I wonder how radioactive all those seeds are going to be if people ever get to use them so there you go I just thought you might want like to know that so there's that So I've got um, global forecast methane. We're going to go to the plots view now for the globe. 
this is a total column right off the bat. Now it's already worse than it has been because normally on total column we don't see all this red coming up in total column. We see a lot of red when we go to surface level but total column we don't normally see all that red. I don't know why I can't get over here. Okay, now we're going to go to surface level and this is parts per billion and I'm going to move this map around while it runs the movie and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get a good view of everything going on. So this data goes back to the 16th. This is real data from the 16th and the 17th. Now this is UTC and so they're like depending on where you are you have to convert your time and then it'll go into the forecast period. So let's load this movie <clears throat> and we'll see what's going on methane wise. Look at this up here off of Europe and Russia and Siberia. That's that's unbelievable. This is the worst I've seen it. I think. I can't remember. I mean, I've I've done videos where like the red was pooling up here in the Arctic. So, you know, I don't know if it's dispersing as it goes out or what. It probably is. Oh, here it was pooling or maybe releasing. I I can't tell. It's kind of a moot point now with it that high because all that methane is heating up the atmosphere and with the, with the atmosphere warmer then your sea ice is going to be melting faster. So let's move this over and you can see um, there's some popping up in Alaska. It's still pretty golden in in the northern hemisphere, but it's not not as concentrated as it has been. Australia looks pretty good with methane. South America does not look as as much as it has been. Africa does not look as much as it has been. The Congo is looking better. But you can still see that the southern hemisphere is still like this blue-green color and when I started doing these methane videos back in April, the lower hem the southern hemisphere was more of a like a like this blue color and the darker blue. So the methane levels have increased worldwide just since I've been doing these methane videos since April. You can see it's increased worldwide because overall like down here, this is the blue green. That's like um, 1780 to 1800. That's just since April 28th when I did the first one. Look at this methane, this green thing going across. That's weird looking. And this is Japan here. That's got a lot of methane coming up.
so that's what's going on methane wise so <clears throat> before we look at sulfur dioxide I want to go to temperatures uh, this is climate reanalyzer here are our temperatures today um, worldwide and you can see in the Arctic like that green that's that's at least five to ten degrees Celsius and I have my cheat sheet over here let's see five degrees Celsius is 41 degrees Fahrenheit 10 degrees Celsius is 50 degrees Fahrenheit so that's the temperature on the edge on the coastline of all around the Arctic Sea there okay and even this this pale green that's above zero blue is at freezing that's zero so most of the Arctic is above freezing and so the sea ice is melting and it's melting quickly let's look at sea ice and snow cover you can see it melting you can see there's more blue popping through since my last video and I'd like to get a little bit different angle here okay so now we're looking at it uh, from this is Russia and Siberia and here's India down here here's Novaya Zemlya and you can see this is the East Siberian Sea and here's that ice shelf that runs from here all the way over and th they've got blue blue ocean right there there's no ice on that sea that's all melted already and you can see it's melted over here to the left of that and to the left of Novaya Zemlya that's all blue so that's all melted too and here's where the um, seed vault is and that's all there's no ice around that island so the permafrost is probably melting up there too and let's look at you can also look at the Antarctic I found this last time and there there are a lot of articles out now about the Antarctic melting twice and three times as fast and the glaciers are melting and it's going to be causing a lot of sea level rise and they're talking about the western the western side of Antarctica melting faster than the eastern side and they consider this part this tail here that's pointing towards South America they're considering that western Antarctic Antarctica that's the west part and you can see this is um, this is the land mass this line is the land mass of Antarctica and the white part is the sea ice so you see that that's all melted over to the land mass and this is the part that's melting so much faster and this is the east side and it's not melting as fast and then you can see like you can see blue through the ice here that's melting really fast too so there's that let's look at the anom two, t two, two meter temperature anomalies now this is how much hotter or colder the temperatures are than they normally are and this is the Antarctic view still and you can see from zero degrees Celsius is going up 
and even parts of the Antarctic are like 8 to 10 degrees Celsius warmer than they normally would be. You can see all these brown areas and here's the sea ice. That's where it's all melting so fast, okay? And even on the east side it's warmer than it's supposed to be. So let's click and change the world view so you can see here's the US and Canada and this western side of Canada the Yukon I think that's the Yukon I'm not sure I have to study up on that that's way warmer than normal normally is let's get another view Africa is warmer and all across Europe and um, these areas that's warmer than it should be um, Saudi Arabia India is way warmer and this is the one I wanted here is Siberia look at that that's getting into the red so that's about 20 degrees Celsius warmer but all across Siberia and here's my other new website to show you this is I was going to show this to you on the Siberia video but I forgot this is um, weather stations around the world and they upload their data and you if you want to know what the temperature is and if it's raining or sunshiny and a couple of days forecast you can just click on these weather stations and find them and so um, we can see if you want to see what's going on uh, like this is the, okay here's the North America here's Russia and Siberia over here and we can zoom in and we can get our weather stations if you want to see um, what the weather's like. Uh, okay, here here we are on the coast of the Kara Sea. Here, this is the Kara Sea, and that's the Barents Sea. This is <coughs> this is. Zirianka and this is in C Celsius this is the temperature and here it is uh, of course they're a day ahead because they're on the other side of the time zones so here's Thursday Friday Saturday it's sunshiny there and starting out at 10 degrees Celsius and gonna go up to um, a little over 15 degrees Celsius so that's pretty warm and that's on the coast of the Kara Sea so and then this is the wind wind speed and direction down here and then they're gonna get some clouds coming in on Friday and it's gonna cool off so I need my cheat sheet so 10 to let's say uh, 10 to 15 degrees Celsius 10 so it's 50 degrees to 50 about 60 degrees 50 to 60 degrees Celsius I mean Fahrenheit <clears throat> right there 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit on the coast there so that's up here <coughs> right up here <coughs> I think let's look at it again right it's right to the right of Novaya Zemlya <coughs> it's right here right there in this area where it's that brown and red so that's why the sea ice is melting because it's hot hot for that time of year 
that's a lot hotter than it should be we went over all that in my Siberia video so <coughs> look at the temperatures on that side of the world you can see well see how hot Africa and India are they're way up there like um, <clears throat> 35 I'd say that's on the 35 well let's just look on our map here let's see Yep. Uh okay. So thirty six degree and they're Friday they're gonna go up to thirty seven degrees Celsius. Thirty seven degrees Celsius is ninety eight degrees Fahrenheit. So that was here at Faya Lar Largo, Faya Largo. And I apologize if people don't like the way I pronounce these things. You know, I don't know foreign languages. I know English. It's potato, potato, tomato, tomato. So, I just talk how I talk. Alright, so, I think you'll find this website interesting, and you can go and see. Let's see how warm it is on Navaya Zimlie. This is Belushia Guba, that settlement that, was n that did not appear on Google Earth, because... It's a secret military installation, probably. Okay, that's almost going to be at 7 degrees centigrade, or Celsius for Friday. And it's raining. It's raining up there. So that's another reason that the sea ice is melting so fast. Because when it rains, then it melts. melts the snow and ice. Let's see how warm it is where the seed bank is, or the seed vault. It's getting up there. 10 degrees Celsius. Bright sunshine. So their permafrost is going to be melting. So I'll share the link to this website as well. <clears throat> and if you want to just narrow it down to Northern Europe, you can by clicking there. And it'll just show Northern Europe. And then you can move it around. But if you want to see the whole world, you can click on Verdun. That means world. I figured that out. See? Let's see how warm it is in Greenland. Let's look over here on the right. That is, uh, Thursday is going to be 3 degrees Celsius. With sun, sun and clouds. So, I just think this is a very helpful tool that people can use. It's from weather stations around the planet. I wonder if it has Antarctica. Well, yes it does. Let's see what's going on on the tail on western Antarctica on Snow Hill. Well, let's 
It's snowing on Snow Hill. And that's minus 16 degrees Celsius. So, but it's still warming up. Warmer than they want it to be. So anyway, there's that website. So let's go back to CAMS. So we saw the global methane. Let's go to, I have something interesting to show you on sulfur dioxide today. I almost showed this first, but I thought, nah, I'll save it. And the reason I got interested in looking at sulfur dioxide Oh, now this is new. I haven't seen this. See? You never know what you're going to find here. The reason I got interested in looking at sulfur dioxide levels is because of the ongoing Hawaii volcanic eruptions since May. And this is actual data. Let's see how far back their actual data for sulfur dioxide goes and we'll know. This is loading. This is, well, it crashed and now it doesn't want to load. Here we go. And I'm going to change my filter results to um, sulfur dioxide. And just to see how far back. Okay, their actual data goes back to Saturday the 16th through Wednesday the 20th. Okay, so what, what we'll see when we run the movie, it's going to go back to the 16th. When we go through the 20th, that's actual data and then when it goes after the 20th it'll go into the forecast period so it's quite a long long period here that we can see kind of what's going on worldwide and I would like to thank Dingle Jack okay they crashed my computer and it's taken me an hour to get everything back up and uh, it wouldn't restart or a whole bunch of stuff so I had to run diagnostics and everything so this is what happens to me when I come under attack <clears throat> and um, I come under technological attack you would not believe the trouble I go through just to get these videos recorded and saved and uploaded and I mean a lot of prayer goes into it and um, <clears throat> my friends praying with me and it's it's a whole thing so uh, this is the dark side not wanting this information out <clears throat> anyway as I was saying I'd like to thank Dingle Jack um, for explaining the measurement of total column of sulfur dioxide, what it means, 10 to the 15th molecules per squared centimeter. And he uh, was kind enough to write under, I think it was my first sulfur dioxide video. <clears throat> um, he wrote an explanation of it. He is a scientist, but the shortcut is it is down here on this chart if it says one that's one parts per million of sulfur dioxide two is two parts per million and here is five and then it goes to ten and then twenty 
and then 50, and then 100, and then 999 on this chart. That deep, deep red. So, <clears throat> well, actually, it's past that because 100 is here in the brick red parts per million. So, we're going to run this movie, and the data, the actual data is from the 16th through the 20th, and then it'll go into the force cast period after that. So, we're going to load it up here. <coughs> And here it's running. Now, just let's just let it go through once and just watch, and then I'll pause it at different places and we can talk about it. Look at that. That's at the Galapagos Islands off the coast of Ecuador. And keep going because it looks like we have some new information on the 20th that just came in off of Brazil. Look, that was right on the coast. <clears throat> I don't know if that was a volcano or what. I haven't looked. Um, so that's new activity. Now we've seen stuff happen in Brazil in the last month or so. Uh, we've seen it plume up here and here. So this is the third time we've seen an eruption from Brazil and now it's going into the forecast period. So they don't really show erupting. They show things spreading out from there. So let's let it run through again. <clears throat> and you can see Hawaii is still erupting. Um, and of course you can uh, see the whole ring of fire here too. You've got stuff going off in Alaska. You've got this red thing in Mexico still where there's that active volcano down there. And then here is from the Galapagos Islands. And now watch. Here comes Brazil. Boom. That happened today. Well, actually, this is UTC time, and um, if you're in uh, if you're in the Western Hemisphere, if you're in like North America, you're earlier than that. It would it would have happened during the 19th sometime. <coughs> And you can, you, there are websites you can go to and you can convert your time to UTC time, etc. So, um, from where I'm at, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause this. Let's, let's see when that hit on Brazil. Okay, that was the 20th, that was 1800 hours. Let's, and we go, when you click once, it goes back three hours. <coughs> so it popped up. Okay, there's uh, June 20th at zero UTC. And then the next click is at three UTC. So where I'm at, you take away eight hours and that's Pacific time. Um, so minus eight hours. So that would be <clears throat> that would have happened at about seven o'clock um, p.m. 7 p.m. on uh, Pacific time on the 19th. So yesterday the 19th for us because um, it's already into the 21st in over um, uh, universal times because they're they're a day ahead of us of us where the timeline starts it's over here so you've got the earth just springing leaks folks it's just springing leaks what can I say <coughs> This is crazy. 
and also did a little research and there's um, this area here that's continuously giving off sulfur dioxide in Africa that's the site of an old ancient volcano as well so um, I think the volcanoes are waking up and you've got activity off the coast of Chile right there I know there's been a lot of earthquake activity there and um, the Galapagos Islands have lots of volcanoes they're almost they were created by volcanic activity so let's run this again this is interesting and I'll move it over so we can see the ring of fire go now let's just watch this okay there's on the 18th where Galapagos goes get ready boom and there's Brazil right on the coast of Brazil <clears throat> And you can see it spreading out <clears throat> the the um, the plume from Hawaii is now spreading out across all of North Northern America and now you can see the plume spreading out from the Galapagos um, you know circulating through the Pacific and spreading out over South America so this stuff is is it's affecting everything <clears throat> and sulfur dioxide is <clears throat> um, one of the main toxic gases that come out of volcanoes and it's it's like twice as heavy as air so it stays closer to the surface and when it goes up in the atmosphere it uh, changes into different different forms and becomes acid rain when it rains and um, it destroys the ozone layer and different things so um, <clears throat> that was the rest of what I was going to show you on sulfur dioxide and then you know that <clears throat> the plume the plume from Brazil was was a surprise to me tonight so <clears throat> just to finish up with our greenhouse gases let's look at carbon dioxide now worldwide and this it starts out at total column and they have changed the way they're showing this because you know it used to show on total column that orangey mix but now they've changed it to more dramatic colors I think because they wanted to uh, you can see the difference in the levels of carbon dioxide a lot better this way that's just my thinking <coughs> so you can see this is parts per million and the red the bright red like that and like what's mainly in the Arctic it's 411 parts per million and then um, there's 415 and then I think that's 500 on the end um, so you've got <clears throat> so here we go let's run the movie and look at all across from Saudi Arabia all the way across to the coast east coast of China in Asia it's covered up in very dark carbon dioxide um, 
it goes across that mid part of Africa it's going from Mexico like Baja and then coming up through the United States through the Midwest and then back down and with the really dark areas and then of course um, it just it just um, <clears throat> flows through the levels what can I say and this is total column so it's the total measurement so let's run the movie starting from the 16th <coughs> Here it goes. Carbon dioxide is another toxic gas that comes out of volcanic activity as well. Methane comes from volcanoes as well. And then a whole bunch of others come from volcanoes too. I did a whole show on volcanoes, sulfur dioxide and volcanoes. So if you want to learn about that, just go back through my YouTube channel and find that. I was going to do part two on that. I might still. But even at the Antarctic, it's still high in carbon dioxide. It's like this, um, like 406 parts per million. And then it gets more as it goes up to the north. And then, um, when you change the level that you're at it it changes the concentration of the carbon dioxide like 850 is HPA is um, a little bit higher than surface level so you can see how much more it's concentrated as it goes up in the atmosphere see that's because that's a little bit higher that's at 500 HPA and it's just covered up and it's a higher concentration um, I don't even know what that reading is that says for I think it's four fifty nine or something. Here it is at three hundred HPA. It's all covered up. The whole planet is covered. And that's higher in the atmosphere. and then it starts um, when you get to 50 HPA it starts leveling out more I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with clicking these stupid things there it starts dispersing but that's way up high in the atmosphere that's 50 HPA <coughs> so I'm gonna wrap it up I have to put this movie together and see if I can get it loaded if they don't keep attacking my computer that's it. that just shows how important this information is this information needs to get out it's very important people need to be aware of what's going on because time is short 
the climate scientists don't think we have much longer, especially Guy McPherson. And I agree. I really don't think we have much longer. So my name is Margo. My website is Margo's Healing Corner. I'm a hypnotist, holistic life coach, empathic spiritual healer, and I'd like to thank all my YouTube subscribers and all my new subscribers and all the comments and people who are sharing information um, you know in the comments below these videos um, I find it most of the comments are very useful and very helpful if if it's just a critical comment it's not going to get approved because that's not helpful but if you want to share some of your studies and discuss things that are going on you know this is a safe place I hope for people to do that because a lot of people don't have anyone to talk to about this stuff because friends and family don't want to hear it they really don't want to hear it they want to just go on with their lives and not be bothered but those of us who are more aware and have curious minds we want to know and we want to understand and with understanding comes acceptance and with acceptance comes peace and so until next time let's go in peace and get your spiritual house in order because time is very short God bless and I'll talk to everyone next time goodbye